<laughs> Welcome, everyone. Uh, Laugh out loud. Okay. Sorry, changing stream description quickly. There we go. Welcome, everyone, to uh, the Fatal Chasers back at it again. I'm glad everyone survived the weekend, some more than others. Um, tonight we have an Amrik with us. Yay, welcome Amrik. But unfortunately, he had to go and poison a Bryn to um, have the opening to arrive. So, Yeah, we, we're at a quarter of one fighter. <laughs> Sorry, only one fighter could be present on Mondays. Um, so Bryn's not going to be with us tonight, but we do have Eric in the house. So maybe with this uh, newfangled puzzle set in front of you, you guys can make some leeway or headway into it. And then back on Thursday when everyone's here once again, we can inch our way forward through this nice little puzzle. But recapping of last session first. Um, you guys were still dealing with the last puzzle. The riddle, the tree from which death has hung, and the multitude of skeletons that reside herein, which you ended up finding out, was 64. And Nori found out um, through a long process, but eventually as the sun maneuvered its way through the sky and allowed shadows to hit at different angles, she found the XY axis that this tree with all the skeletons above it, lie in a grid. Looking back and suddenly getting the inspiration, um, Racha looked into... Was it Racha? Yes, it was Racha. That looked into the riddle uh, and saw that there was a starting point in the words. And with that, there was numerical values in which to move from there and through guided inspiration from some higher power maybe transmitter maybe someone else he was able to remove each of the skulls from the correct chest cavities they fell into the earth and when he got to the last one this one moved aside the earth for him a chest lay at the basin and after the chest removed the skeleton resumed his location interred in the dirt as the rest of the skeletons disintegrated, leaving the tree barren. You opened up the chest, found a little bit of money, found, I believe it was an arm, the left arm, if I remember correctly, I'm not looking at my notes, mm -hmm. um, and another slip of paper. The arm, oh, and a ring, yes, correct, and a ring. Um, the arm was placed into the chest and the slip of paper fed to the skull upon the chest and the riddle burst forth once more and for sake of remembering it and everything um since amrick put it in the chat uh, our discord chat it'll go actually let me pull it up on my end of things so i don't give you the I'll give you guys one more chance to hear everything. Robin's a horse's mouth. <laughs> um, where did I put this riddles? Riddles. All right. <clears throat> oh ho, congrats. You look death in the eye. Now we turn our attention to the northern sky. Numbers have been your folly. Now shapes are on the rise. Figuring out the meanings will lead you towards your prize. Find the home where the woman lies and then tell her you know. From there to the east where the forest cries, don't read the tempting tome. Northward bound, but watch your feet, for pyramids are pointy. Find the clearing lush to your waist and then let the sun anoint thee. And with that, that's where we resume. After everyone sort of went, fuck. And then... Robo, Robo Amrick printed out this piece of paper with all the with the riddle written on it. <laughs> oh, thank you. Amrick just all of a sudden goes... Kr, kr, 
<laughs> from the <laughs> fax noise. I'm gonna display it there. Does Amrick have a printing says, function? Please yeah. load paper. Yeah, I was gonna say, he's got no paper inside, so he wouldn't be able to print anyway. For yeah. able to get in paper. You don't want to know where the receipt comes out of. <laughs> I just imagine the teeth turn into, like, the, the print type. Is that gonna go out the mouth? <laughs> well, so, it with that, you have been given the room. And that's where we resume as the group ponders what was just been said. The time of day is closer into the PM's 3.34. So you have a couple more hours of sunlight before night washes over you all. Okay. Um, does anyone have identified? I do. Um, can I do it? Can I check if this ring is magical in any sense, or is it just... Um, what, are you trying to arcana check it, or, like, detect magic it? Um, I mean, I would like to arcana check it first, before I hand it off to the girls. I uh, to Nori and Polly. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead and make an arcana check. Okay. I don't know why I said that. I've been working with it. Ooh. Um, you don't see any runes, any inscriptions, any engravings, nothing. I just it's... feel like it's taking so much longer. Okay. Because it is taking so much longer. <laughs> it's only been 15 minutes, Mom. You'll be fine. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Phone updates, you know, it takes a while. Um, let's see here. Okay. So I would, uh, if one of you wouldn't mind looking at this, I'm not sure what it is. Besides the blue gem, it's not like a sapphire. Is it like a sapphire or just a? It's a blue, blue gem. gem. Um, it's not quite as deep blue as the sapphires that were in the eyes were. Okay. So you're not sure if it's. You're you're not a jeweler, so you have none of you guys have any jewel jeweling history. So you'd have no clue as to okay, this is a sapphire, but it's just poor or quality or better quality or you know you know what right. Happened. If it was your mom, then she'd be able to fucking tell you, oh, this bitch. Yeah, as she takes out her monocle. <laughs> She's like, this is worth a couple pieces of gold right here. Um, well, your mom is proficient in jeweler's tools. I would I would imagine so. Um, so I would offer the ring to Nori and Polly if someone wouldn't mind identifying it. I can cast Identify, but the last time I cast Identify, it resulted in an interesting situation, so I'd like to be fully prepared for when I do. I uh, can cast Detect Magic to see if it's even magical if we want to. <coughs> okay. <coughs> so you cast it. <coughs> Sorry. There we go. No air bubble? Alright. Um, you cast Detect Magic. I said if. Do we want? So, is that what we want to do, or are we just casting identify? Nope, you already said detect magic. Oh no. So, one thing that uh, has been a little bit different between um, Bryn's sea invisibility, you casting detect magic, and a couple other things is that everyone's sort of seen their own thing. Well, not now. As you detect magic, you sort of open up your eyes and are greeted by the sight of hundreds, if not maybe a thousand um, ghostly apparitions that are standing around this tree. And they are all facing this way towards the tree, but their heads are twisted around, facing your direction off um, on the edge of this area. I thought we were out of this clearing because I wanted oh, you guys to are. You, you are, but you guys haven't like traveled and gotten out of the clearing you guys went into your this is our little safe area in the forest spot but there has been no traveling that has gone down since then it is literally the, the chest was taken from this clearing gotten away from the tree into the forest where things have been safe for you guys so far and right there but all the, those people are now turned in that direction staring at Amber. staring at this clearing Amrick. okay I'm sure Amrick looks very surprised. Yeah, we're we we need we're gonna go, like right now. 
But the ring is magical. Okay. <laughs> what, kind of, what kind of magic? Um, you want to sit there and try and figure it out? No, okay. we're gonna go. All right. As they slowly start to turn around. Yes, let's sit <laughs> here for a little while and figure it out. I feel like yeah. shit. Um, they're looking at us, so we're gonna go. But they're not doing yeah. anything, right? For now. All right, uh, Val, could I lead my large friends? We don't have to go far, but we do have to go. To find a place where we can stand where we're not looking at ominous ghosts. Make a history check, Brent. Nori. Sorry, I just initially always put Brynn at the end of the history check. Okay. Um, that that was that was a 20. That was a 20. It was barely a 3. I What the fuck? I'll take the 13. I'm just pissed at this system. What the hell? Um, so, you immediately try to remember the path that the either the sun that you saw overhead for a brief moment and where the sun of the forest had led you towards this area because as far as the riddle goes you were told to go north so you know you guys went to the northern shore and you're guessing that the northern shore is probably going to be the closest shore out of all of them so you, you're trying to um, head back in the same direction that you arrived in um, at least for 30 minutes of, of running you can continue on if you want, but I don't think you guys would be going absolutely banana hammock towards until you hit the shore, unless that's what you guys want to decide. Would probably be based on Amrick's comfort, so sorry. I mean, I know the group feels like shit, so just kind of far or away, but um... It doesn't, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't have to be super far. I know you were concentrating on Bryn's well-being, but I just got blown up like four times. <laughs> so I'm a little bit tired and can't move quite that fast. I think 30 minutes is fine. I mean, it shouldn't take us that much longer to get out of the forest, hopefully. Only took us two hours because the sun decided to take its time. Because I can't move through the forest very fast. No, the... 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 the Sorry, deer? Moose? Moose. Moose. Took two hours to get here, but we can take our time leaving. Moose's antlers, they're like a cup. They look, so they're, they're a lot that, bigger than a deer's. Just imagine that's where Rachel was sitting, was in one of the cups. <laughs> and and the, in the sheer fact that a moose weighs almost a ton. Yeah. And a deer weighs like buck fifty. <laughs> Literally. Yeah. Um... Yeah, 30 minutes sounds good enough for for me. If... I remember, like I said, when the moose or the sun of the forest showed you in this way, it wasn't a straight path. It was very much a little bit over here, little bit over there. Yeah. So, 30 minutes sounds safe enough for me, Kaporn. Okay. So, 30 minutes pass, and you guys kind of... Except for Nori, she's just like, that was just a walk. Everyone, I, I'm, I'm being, everyone running I'm being was just patient. her walking. <laughs> just, just a, just a brisk, brisk walk through the woods. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As Kaporn like probably fell down like twice, and stumbled a little bit. Luckily, I believe mending and prestidigitation are now in your guys' group, so that can all get taken care of. Mm -hmm. Yep. Kaporn's already started cleaning everyone up, so like scorch marks, whatever. So thirty minutes. I can't do that. I know that's black magic. <clears throat> um, thirty minutes, and you guys stop. He um, he's already detected that it is magical. Um, I don't think he wants to waste another spell on Detect Magic. Yeah, I don't think so. Check my spell slots. I will ask him, um, because Detect Magic lasts for 10 minutes, right? Yeah. Do those things follow us those 10 minutes? Um, you guys were close to the end of Magic at the time. He would say that he, uh, Emmerich lost visual on those, um, uh, 
things once he lost visual on the clearing. I have to say, I felt really bad for leaving things that way. Was um, there we, anything we could do? We we can try going back after we sleep, but I don't think it's a good idea to stay there. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I wouldn't mind that. But um, it's up to you guys how quickly you want to get the hell out of here. I think we can probably take our time. Um, Val, there was no sign of anything. There were no sign of really large creatures, were there? Like, uh, there were like wolves and this is, stuff for the biggest the I saw. This is too densely packed for anything. The moose is about as large of a creature that could confidently move through here. Big snakes. I mean, if there were, again, everything, it, they would be tree going snakes because you would have noticed stuff on the floor, but. Unless they're, I mean, anacondas can and can go through the trees without leaving traces behind. So it's not so much a. If there are giant snakes here, good fucking luck, because they're not going to leave stuff behind for you to notice. You can only tell when they're traveling on the ground because they move stuff out of the way. Well, as long as we don't really mess with them, I think as far as snakes, snakes go. Well. Magic snakes might be a different story. Just take for me. We already killed one of those. Two. Technically. The temple as well. Like... Oh, yeah. <clears throat> um, Giving a second shot at redemption there, and you guys are like, no, fucking kill it. I, I'm just waiting for if we have to fight one and we kill it for the ash to come out of the woodworks and be like, what the fuck, guys? Another one, guys? Come the fuck on. You know how expensive <laughs> those are? Yeah, I feel like they're the bottom of a god or something at this point. Um, we, don't, we don't know that. I know. Do we want to identify the ring here? Or? I can identify it. If I start to bleed out of my face again or get possessed, I don't know, kill me or something. Uh. <laughs> I don't think your god would approve of that. No, I can say that now. Yeah, it's it's different, but it's a good different. And I look at your arm and like, I don't think you approve of that, right? No response. He doesn't expect one. You're, you're talking to a metal arm, so if you were really expecting a response, there's only one type of response you were going to get. And that was getting fucking smacked in the face. Um, okay, so you guys can identify? Wait, we're in boosted magic period, and what's his yeah. bucket already said that identify did... That, like, the identification spells kind of are a little wonky right now. Do we want to? You refer to a lot There's of people. easier way to do this. So. Put the ring on uh, for an hour. Illinade, he okay. said something about... Uh, <laughs> uh, Polly, what were you saying? So there's an easier way to do this. Just put the ring on for an hour. What He said... He wants the if, ring. It, if it's a ring that requires your attendant, yeah. Yeah. I mean... Yeah. If it's a ring that doesn't uh-huh. require attunement, you put it on. Some weird things are, we don't know. Well, no. Um, with items that don't require attunement, that's usually why you really need to know what they do, because since they don't require attunement, you don't understand it during the attuning process. So mm. you put on a ring of water walking. You're just going to have a nice looking ring on you until all of a sudden you step in a puddle and don't get wet. As far as entombment goes, when it comes to this magic weirdness, is it going to take twice as long because you need to do it during magic? No, remember, times or... items have their own source of magic inside them, okay. and that helps with the Just making sure. Yep, but it also doesn't mean that it, you know, the 20 minutes don't half the time that you mm-hmm. need for tuning. It's its its own thing. So, I'm going to put it on and just, like, I don't know what this does, but we'll, we'll keep walking. Okay. Um, Cursed. For you, it would, oh, it would probably only fit on Pinky 
Yeah, pinky. I only wear it. I have. I don't wear a ring right now, so pink ring it is. Mm-hmm. So his teacup ring is now adorned. All right. Can I find a teacup now? And you guys so are... continue walking towards the North Shore. Yeah. I... Okay. So using Nori's uh, history check, you guys continue walking back in that rough direction. Um, it doesn't take two hours to get back to the North Shore because, like I said, the, the Son of the Forest took very interesting routes. Um, and you guys are more of doing a point A to point B rather than uh, going through the entire alphabet. Um, Nori leading the group. Who would be... Let's put ourselves in order here. Don't worry about that. I'm going to move us back to this. Danger! So I'll be first. And Rachel usually likes standing in the back, doesn't he? Yeah. It's a fight between Amrick and Rachel usually. We can get rid of the X dot Rachel. Or Amrick with Rachel on my shoulder. That's better. Do that one. Call it one cracker. I mean, Ritra won't say no. No, I don't. <laughs> Polly doesn't like crackers. What? Um, I would say it's going to be either Bran or Kaporin. That's probably behind Nori. Probably Kapoor, because Bridge is going to get absolutely uh, enamored and uh, distracted while walking. Look at those bounce. That movement side to side. I know she's wearing a cloak on her back, but I can see right through that thing. I don't need to identify those. So, just to make it easy, put someone over everyone. Alright. Well, that's our, our walking path. I funny. I feel smaller. Did you all of a specifically sudden. lower the Nori character for shortness' sake, or is that lower? No, prior? just because Rachaz is so far down. I feel shorter all of a sudden. Huh. It makes you feel better. There you go. It does. Thank you. <laughs> um. All right. So, like I said, uh, the the son of the forest took a very haphazard approach getting through the forest to that location, and you guys are taking a straight line. Um, Kaporn and Bryn, I need to make dexterity saving throws. Thank you. Uh, I'll get Bryn. My apologies. I can roll for her if you want. I got it, I got it. You don't want to be the one blamed for failing stuff. It's her dice. Um, let me see. Okay. Because she's got this extra thing that adds her shield to rolls, but she would not be holding her shield while walking through the forest. Um... So that's a fail for Bryn. Um, that's a success for Kaporin. So Kaporin, you take half the damage. Huh? Um, 19 points to Bryn. That'd be uh, 10 for you, Kaporin. Is it bludgeoning? It is not bludgeoning, it's slashing. Ow! As um, Nori, you guys are walking in between these trees, and it's sort of at the last moment that you realize something's off. And you didn't trigger it because you have lighter feet and free, and you're not hampered by the speed of traveling through this forest, but everyone else is. Um, and as soon as you pass through, 
you realize that these roots that are up at the top of the ground are not actual roots connected to the tree. They're, um, they're called snapping vines. And as soon as you go over them, they go up. And basically what they do is they damn near decapitate people. Um, they'll usually with, with smaller creatures and such, they'll straight up kill them in one shot. And then the vines grow over the body and basically pull it into the ground and use it for decomposting. Um, but these vines just reach up and hit Kaporin in the chest, but hit Bryn in the throat. And with that, Bryn goes down as the vine that has impacted her throat like takes her off her feet. She lands on her back and the vine is now pulling, trying to suffocate her. Um, sword. Okay. Um, you are the sword? We... All right. Kaporin? I'm right. I feel like I'm right next to her, so I'll probably be okay. the fastest. So Kaporin, you summon your sword, and as you do so, it's magic boosted time. So you summon the sword, and <laughs> the the flame that happens, sort of the ash and timber, just <laughs> into the air as you summon the sword and bring it down. Go ahead and make an attack roll for me. Attack. My zoom cut out. I was very confused. Fifteen. Um, that's lower than normal. It's plus seven to hit. Yeah. Okay. Never mind. Um. So you swing down and you hit it. Luckily, you don't hit Brynn. Go ahead and roll damage. Nora, with your perception check, you realize, or with your passive perception, yeah. Uh, uh, you realize that as he summoned that and the flame and everything went, it is now smoldering the trees next to you. Okay. That's interesting. So, um, by this, his weapon is going to catch these trees on fire. Uh, it, I mean, it's not creating any more fire anymore, but right now, it's that it could go one of two ways. Either it continues to smolder and eventually catches, or it just smolders and fizzles out. Okay, what's the area, like the radius that it's affected? Um, you guys walk right between two large trees. So there's literally a five foot between these two trees that he did. Uh, uh, this is going to be funny because it's boosted magic. I'm going to cast create and destroy water, create uh, water like above that area and have it rain down. It's okay. supposed to create 20 gallons of water um, okay. in a... Yeah, no, I have... I have created destroy water boost in stats here wait can Wonderful. i just press wait doesn't press a digitation take out fire it takes out a single small flame oh it's not out a candle a torch or a small campfire yeah. seeing I'm, this I'm trying oh, to oh, oh. Go, ahead. go ahead seeing this happen right in front of me i'm gonna yelp at amber can grab a tree and then grab brin start pulling yeah good born you've cut down on this this vine it's a thick like five six inch thick mm -hmm. vine so mm -hmm. you don't get all the way through with that first swing since it's my packed weapon can i technically make a second attack on it um do you have multi-attack um because i have a pact of the um let me see here uh thirsting blade i can attack um with my packed weapon twice okay then yeah yeah attacks for action too Ooh, that's okay. So, I hit print. Yeah, go ahead and roll damage. Ow, Emmerich, Polly has yelled back at you. Nori, you create or destroy water, and as you do so, um, you create the water up into the in the sky above this little area, and very much water park, less rain. Much more giant water tower has opened up as it just starts <laughs> just draining. But as that happens and you finish casting it, there's that moment of, you know, gravity needing to take effect and everything that you're like, I'm really thirsty. And there's a moment across everyone here that they realize everyone's really thirsty. 
And it, Nori, with your passive perception, you also notice that a lot of wilting happens directly around you. A lot of the, the bush. And... Okay, so it drained the water around us. I'm. Seems like there's little effect. Amrick's I'm fine. A... Yeah. He's a little rusty jointed at the moment, but he's about to get um, a waterfall and feel much better. So, if we drink water, it'll be a little bit better? Well, <laughs> as soon as that feeling starts to overcome everyone and everything, the water tower explodes. Um, and then everyone feels pretty much okay after that. As if, uh... Soaking wet? Unfortunately, not expecting that much water to happen, everyone gets probably a few good mouthfuls. Rin does that mean that does. the vines wilted a little bit for us to pull her out? No, not the vines. Just... Like, leaves and everything. Like, you guys didn't get absolutely desiccated. It was just... It seemed to affect everything in a radius just a little bit. Alright, well... Since we're walking along the forest... Oh, and, and Brynn takes three points of slashing damage. Yeah. You guys just get whipped. Um, Paul yells at me. And then just water falls from everywhere. Yep. I'm going to walk forward and... Um, after seeing uh, Kaporin try and brutally commit homicide on my friend Bryn, mm -hmm. I will push her out of the way. <laughs> and, um... Go ahead and make a athletics I'll try and do... Uh, a what? Athletics? Correct. Uh, where's athletics? There it is. Kaporin, go ahead and roll an 8 for me. A d8. Oh shit. Uh, D8. Nori, make a deck save. <laughs> Match me! So, Am uh, Rolls. And then you guys hear the second attack. Ting! And Brid goes, ah! Nori's Sorry. about Nori's about to say something, and then Amric just goes move and body checks you. And when Amric body checks someone, it's it's a truck. It's different now. Um, yes, it's Optimus Prime hitting you rather than something else. And so Kapoor, I am Kapoor just one of goes, the lightest members of the party. <laughs> like he immediately flies ten feet. Nori, you're just like, oh, that's a big boy as Kaparin's body is now flying towards you, and you have nowhere to go. You, you try to start to move, but it's it's just not happening. Um, six points of bludgeoning for the both of you. Half for Kaparin. As now there is a uh, Kaparin squishing a Nori. Ow! Oh, oh, shit, I didn't mean to... Oh. Get off me! Um... How how is this vine that's currently around Bryn holding? Like, is it hold, how is it holding her down? Is it just wrapped around her throat? No, it is. Um, think of it just like a, a rope over her throat, being pulled down and around because the vines are wrapped around the bases of the trees near it. So it's like ratchet strapping down. I think I hit her in the armor. Okay. Um, I guess I'll continue to cut the vine then. She's covered in armor. Um, all right, go I ahead mean, I didn't hit her in her face. <laughs> Thank go, God. Go ahead and make an attack. I'd be very mad at you. I know I gave your girlfriend a scar. I'm sorry. Or wife. Excuse me. Shame on you. That was almost an 18. Go ahead and roll damage. <laughs> That's a miss as well. God damn it. Um... I just threw around Kaporn for doing the exact same thing. <laughs> you reach up with this with your new sword and just bring it down. Uh, then you hear a ding! Oh! As Bryn lets out a larger scream. Uh. <laughs> I'm being crushed by Kaporn right now. I roll off. I roll off. If I can, roll she's, off. she's like heavily thinking about casting blur just to possibly not get hit. <laughs> um, she's gonna reach and try. Yeah, well, let me see. 
while I'm pulling her, oh, I'm going to cast Cure Wounds on her. I, I have another attack to miss. Oh, yes, you do. No, I do not miss. Okay, that hits. I was going to say, that's the spirit. Let's go ahead and roll damage. She got nine EN healing. Damage. Okay. Thing only had 10 HP. So, uh, with that, so you're able to cut the vine free. And she gasps her breath back. Um, but now all of you are standing in the exact same area where these snapping vines had went off, except for Nori and Kapoor. Uh, so there's this there's this brief moment where Bryn's like, <sighs> and then you guys start to hear rustling before. I need, uh, luckily Polly doesn't need to, because he's too short. Uh, but Amrick, you're the only person standing here currently, so I need you to make four deck saves. I almost want to say we should probably just skip the formality. Um, well, I need to know which one hits you. That's a that's a okay. The first one, one hits you. Uh, <laughs> Scene. Don't worry, you don't need after the first one. You don't need to to suffer. Um, oh, this is gonna be interesting. So the next vine snaps up, and as Amrick sort of like has his sword down after just cutting the vine apart, uh, he looks up and just catches the next vine almost directly in the face and just lifts away enough for it to catch his neck and absolutely DDT him into the ground. Well, would be the ground. But he is currently over a Bryn, and the Bryn is on the ground. So Bryn takes the force of an Amric falling on her. A Polly pulling the Bryn wouldn't move her out of the way after she was released? I'd say you can either heal or you can pull. It's not a both the same time thing. No, well, I was okay. Okay. These, this is all happening at the same time. Um, I'm this just is little... just an absolute shit show, which is what is happening right now. Um. So, Amrick, how much do you weigh again? Like two hundred ninety pounds. Okay, three hundred pounds, easy. So I'll just do a D ten for each hundred pounds. Ow. He's solid metal. It's still ow. Um, that's fifteen it, points of bludgeoning damage. It wouldn't change my reaction, even if he wasn't metal. <laughs> well, if he wasn't metal, if it was like one of you guys falling, it would be like a d6 per hundred pounds. Um, so Bryn is now under Amric, who is currently being choked out. Okay. Does it does it matter that I do not need oxygen? It's less of the, the you don't have to worry about the suffocating part, but it's definitely the more You're if it strangled. keeps going, these vines if they take you to zero, they decapitate you. So it's much more that's what's going on here. Can I chill touch the vines? Um chill touch is a ranged spell attack, and these are technically prone things, so it'd be a disadvantage. Mmm. But Kapoor is off Nori at this point in time. And Polly, you're... You just felt this... of wind just flying over your head. And then an Amrik get absolutely um, Stone Cold Stunnered in front of you. So who goes first? Me or Kaparin? It's sort of... Everyone gets an action at this... this turn. Okay, paint me a picture of what's happening here, because... There's two large trees in the middle. There's, there's, uh, here, I can do this. Boom, boom. Um, polygon. Boop, 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 boop. Um. Those are the two trees. There's, uh. There's currently a Bryn there. With an Amric on top. Oops. I am a magician. I'm able to do things without even knowing how I'm doing these things. Oh god, now I can't put the square back. There we go. So there's a Bryn there, and there's an Amric on top. Amric is currently being um, slowly decapitated. 
Kaparin's with you. Polly's on this side. And Racha is currently climbing the tree. Because that's what Racha would do. Okay. He saw the fire too Can and I... was going to go up there to pad it out. But then you drenched him. Yeah. Um, can I go over to the vine and acid claws into the vine? You can certainly try. That's what I'm going to try. Okay. I thought they could turn hitting on the two of them. Make a deck save before you do that. I rolled so many fives. <laughs> so no and that 19 is to go at my own neck to get this fucking vine off me. This is rude. Nori walks. Oh, wait, this is a, would this count as a uh, plant magically created or like just to impede movement? No. Ah, oh, I'd get advantage on that. Um, you you walk forward and you activate your claws and immediately just get Hah! just absolutely thrown back. Like, um, you took the paladin class. Um, you take five points of slashing damage from the vine hitting you. Oh, I never did uh, Amric's slashing damage. Six points of slashing to you, Amric. Um, and that throws you on your back, but you have the claws out already, so you grasp at it and Try to attack it. Go ahead and roll damage for that. Anything for you, Polly? Yeah, can I heave Bran as much as I can out of that situation? Uh, yeah, it'll be an athletics check. I know she's got an amber on top of her butt. Yeah, it's an athletics check. Um, Nori, you, you acid crack your uh, the vines. It's more of, it's not as an immediate attack, uh, not an immediate release, because the acid needs to do its work for a little bit so it's like a you reach up and grab it and just like try and close your hand around the vine um but eventually it does let go okay um, and Kaporin, if uh, there's something you would like to do um free your brother you uh polly you do get to start to squeeze Bryn out of there her upper half's free her legs are still underneath but you're you know doing the scoot and she's starting to help as well is it understood, like, if you just step in this area, they're just going to attack at you, or is it more of Probably. Some, there's a trigger? Okay. I mean, <clears throat> you can inference what you would like. Okay. Um, yeah, Nori hasn't had the time to explain what these are. <laughs> can I just yell, stay low? Yep. I'm... Can I stay short? <laughs> can, How can would you like corn? to try and stay short? I don't want to crawl across this stuff. The choice so, is yours. What do you want to do? I'd rather take a shot at it than crawl across it. Okay. Um, what are you doing? Um, I'm trying to chill touch it from a distance. All right, chill touch. Go ahead and make the attack. Disadvantage. 20. Okay. Okay. Go ahead and roll damage. Yeah. That's enough to break the the vine that is holding Amric down currently. So the, uh, the vine releases off your neck, Amric, and you in immediately roll off the side, and Polly, you finish pulling Bryn. Because Nori's getting up. And Rachel is just up there holding an arrow, like, waiting for another vine to pop off. Can I burn uh, this for us? No. No. I will crawl my way out of the area with the vines. Okay. Okay. Now I'd like to make like perception checks on the floor. Is this everywhere or is it just here? Um, go ahead and make a perception check. No wonder the sun of the forest took a weird path. Um, it's not everywhere, but um you do see there are these little natural traps set up kind of pot marked all over the forest 
Okay. Can I? Is there a way I could lead them in a yeah, way that, that you know would trigger those? Yeah. Easy enough to do. Sorry, I didn't know these were here. They're snapping gabines. They like to try and decapitate creatures and then pull them under and use your body as fertilizer. Uh, I can lead us around them now that I know they're here. Lead the way. Sorry, Bryn. Um, are we, but we're on opposite sides of this trap. Can I, yeah, can we go, like, around, go the around the tree? Yeah. yeah. All right, Nori's at a sharp eye out for potential uh, plants trying to trap us. All right. Focusing up. Hound dog, Nori, go. Sounds good. All right. And we continue our traversing. So you continue moving throughout the forest. Um, for a little while longer. Um, Kaporin, that ring never... never gives any effect. But then you also realize, oh yeah, a tuning. You need to sit there and focus on it for an hour, not just hold on to it. So, yeah, that might be a thing. I or it might be a ring that doesn't require a tuning. So, first thing he does, oh. tries and walks on water. <laughs> <laughs> He's just like, huh, huh, Spider-Man, huh. I don't know. I saw this thing where the webs came out of your arms. I don't know. Sounds like a horrible yeah. mutant. <laughs> and as, as Nori has a vine that can come out of her arm. Um, so with that, you guys eventually, with Nori sort of redirecting um, you guys through possibilities of death in this forest, you finally make it to the North Shore. Less than two hours, but more than an hour. How big is this place? Like, to open that clearing? The North Shore? Mm-hmm. It's, it's an entire North Shore of that map. Um, I'll pull us back over. Of that island, I should say. What about what time of day is it? You guys have about an hour, maybe two before nightfall. The riddle said to keep our eyes, or to turn, let me see here, what was the exact wording I said? Turn our attention to the northern sky? Isn't, for memory's sake, that's where the aurora took place, wasn't it? Well, the, the aurora, aurora directly above you. Oh. Okay. Uh, mm. Just looking in that direction, I don't see, we don't... Just turn your attention to the northern sky. Like, Corn's looking in the sky. Is like, there something I'm supposed to see right now? But the actual from uh, water to forest, it's a little um, over 80 feet. Yeah, it doesn't matter now anyway. I checked the spell and I can't cast it. Gotcha. Um, and then as far as left and right go, it's it's a shore. So you have beach in either direction as far as you can see. Um, the beach is a gravel beach, correct? Uh, for the majority of it's gravel, and then there is some larger sand towards the actual water's edge. Uh, have we come across any more of that, like, the grave moss, or that's what it was called, right? Grave, grave keeper's moss. Yeah. Grave keeper's moss. Nope. Okay. Seeing if any more haunted souls were here, so that when we went to sleep, uh, just possession. Find um, the gravel and do that. I don't know, Karen. I'm not. I, I I have a god now. I don't know much about the literally whole... happened yesterday. I don't. It happened yesterday. I'm very new at this. <laughs> I'm told you should try to talk to it often. He said when I should try. 
So, shall we set up camp then? Yeah, we can. Um, can I do like a little perimeter sweep to make sure everything's on the level? Because we did see merfolk in the water. Yeah, go ahead and make your sweepage with a perception check. Are you going into the water? Uh, no, probably just more of walking along the edge. Okay. Yeah. Uh, just gravel, some sand, nothing out of the ordinary. And then, like, looking into the trees, all of that, just kind of... Nothing screaming out that something's amiss. It's just normal foresty stuff. Lovely. All right. Like I said, when you guys first landed here, you heard sounds of creatures and such inside um, that should be attached to a forest, so seems just as normal as when you first landed. Just doing my due diligence. Give you. So, camp cr created. You guys don't really have tents or anything, so it's literally just everyone unpacking their bedrolls uh, and then doing a fire. Yeah, I mean, I have tents, but I don't think we use them often. Very not. Because <laughs> you guys always seem to take camp in places where you don't want to be found taking camp. Or the weather or something is, is against you from setting up a good camp. So it's just like, fuck it. It, the the tents are just for if like it's raining. That's that's essentially what it is. It's like this is our night umbrella. That's all these are good for. No, it does not look like it's gonna rain tonight. Lovely. It is a pretty clear day and night. I can pull out my cool fire resist fire resistant fireproof bedroll. Your fire, fire retardant bedroll. Yep, fire retardant. So no one sets your bedroll on fire anymore. You're horrible, demonic. It's all right. Don't worry. Nori's got acid claws. Um, it's not acid resistant. <laughs> I haven't gone after your stuff. Um, but are we digging into rations? Uh, let me see what I've got. I want to make sure it's my apartment or are we because you've you've dealt with creator destroy water during the magic boosted time and creator destroy feast. food I don't know we've the done spell create slots. food earlier okay it, it didn't explode on us but yeah we can do rations because I imagine we're kind of sick of the the hard grind uh, besides oh wait Amrick was carrying all his rations I was like oh Amrick has rations he's never going to use again no, I did. I had so many rations too. Like, and they're no. junk. Um, I I have. There's truly so many in the bag. That's quite alright have... because as you start to pull some out, you're like, ooh. Rations don't save forever, and so you're starting to pull some out that are questionable to be eaten. Not all. I'll get of them, rid of the questionable ones. But we'll say a quarter of the ones that you guys have are very questionable. Have an interesting smell to them. Have colors that shouldn't be on them. Yeet. Okay. Fish food. Uh, no? Probably don't okay. want to chum the water right next to where we're sleeping. It's like dry. If dry anything, meat. you can wait to eat them till the morning. Or like yeah. have Racha run straight down the... <laughs> As sure. fast as he can. Oh, <laughs> and then yeah. on like an opposite thing, throw it. You're gonna take all the you're gonna tell the the hoarder to take these rations and throw them into the water because we're no longer gonna have them. Yeah, that's gonna happen. He's gonna see If he just... wants them, he can have them. You know what? We'll say that's what goes on. You tell him, hey, throw these into the water so at least a fish can eat them and no Am I losing a fourth of them? Yes. Okay. Corn will steal one. It's like I want to feed the fish. Amrick, did you lose all your cooking utensils too? Make a sleight of hand check against Kaporin for Chuck. Um, I want to say you said stuff. Did. 
I, I did lose my cooking utensil, but I've got these magical ones from Wacha. And Amrak will turn them into cooking utensils. Yeah. As Nori hands these to Racha, Rachal's like grabbing them, and then your hands like slut sneaks out from the side and he just, just beak bites your pinky. I want to feed the fish too! And he's about to turn around and run, and then he hears Amrick say, Magical items from Racha. Racha just stops for a moment and kind of like moves over his shoulder. Again, I, he, I tried again. And then go ahead. <laughs> I, I don't think I can. Oh. Nope. Yeah, I figured I couldn't. He tries better this time. Let me just make sure. Yeah. That's because it's going to be your side of hand versus his side of hand. So his minimum side of hand is 20. Oh. So basically, I steal it and he steals it right back without me even noticing. There. You don't even steal it. Um, <clears throat> but then he he runs off. Disposes of the rations. How many rations was that, Nori? Uh, I rounded up, uh, so 17. So he disposes of 17 rations and then makes his way back. Jesus, we have so many rations. Disposes. We have 50 left. you have anything that we we can use to cook, Polly? Nothing. It was all in my backpack. No. I also ha still have those magical herbs that we can use. What kind of magic do they have? Uh, I think they do a number of things. Like the one time we used them. It made us speak different languages, those ones, but I, I want to say that's not the only thing that they do. Trying that to was not fun. But it does make food taste better, so. That's the important part. Yeah, if we're going to eat hardtack, we might as well make it taste better. Then I will go into the forest and start collecting wood for the fire, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Sorry, I... Long overdue to organize this thing. That's quite all right. So is there anything anyone would like to do before night? Uh, oh, wait, are we using the magical herbs? Yes. Okay. Do you know or how many... Not uh, partake. I have nine uses left. Okay, make that eight. And go ahead and roll a d10 for me. I will not partake. Do you I... anything about it? When do you normally ask Paparin how the food was prepared when dinners happen? We don't. I just have to wait for, for a ration. I'm just like, okay, I'll go here now. If, if Polly's making breakfast, lunch, or dinner, no one has ever asked him, Oh, what's in this, and how did you make it? Fuck. Except Everyone... for probably Nori. <laughs> hey, only, when he is, only when he says, look, I made a vegan option for you, and then you go, ooh, what's in it? I have cooked utensils. I'm probably in the kitchen a decent amount, or I had cooked utensils. Yeah. I think point is scared of his life whenever Alex's in the kitchen. Uh, Just my food's scared. gonna be poisoned. My meal's poisoned, I know it. Okay, here we go. Magical herbs table uh, nine. Scroll, scroll, scroll. I think we rolled a ten last time. I feel. Um, as you add the herbs to the food and Polly is cooking things together, probably pot make it easy. Um, <clears throat> there's this interesting blue sort of coloration to the smoke when the herbs initially impact the food. Not really thinking too much of it. It's magical herbs, you know. Um, Polly, you take a, a sip of the uh, a little sip of the stew um, immediately as you think it's ready. Tastes delicious. 
and you guys serve it up and everyone starts digging in. I need everyone to roll a d100. Oh shit, ma wild magic? Oh, no. I want to use my fancy dice on my arrow. 46. Eighteen. Twenty-five. Um, and then roll for for Chot and Bryn. I roll for Chot, and then you roll for Bryn. Guess I'll roll for Bryn. I'll play the blame. Oh, okay. Yeah. So Racha and I are one off from each other. So 18, 25, 26, yeah, 35, 85. We have a good a kind of a close spread. Except for that 85. Yeah. <laughs> Polly gets um what's it up? Um what the hell does he I'm forgetting the name of the spell, Polly. Divine Intervention. There it is. Way too high for that. All right. Uh, let's start with the lowest first. 18. <clears throat> okay. Um, and this would be Kapur? Yes, Kaporin. As you finish your meal, um, everyone finishing roughly at the same time, and you feel this itchy sensation across the entirety of your chin and uh, upper lip before shortly after that, uh, mimicking Racha, but instead of black feathers, you now have um, this almost pearlescent white feathering um, of beard and mustache full full set beard that goes down about two feet of feathers who is that effect for compare um next we have nori and the feather beard nori and racha back to back Twi yeah 25 26. <clears throat> i can stroke my feather beard um mm. Okay, so Rachel's the 26, right? All right. Um, Correct. Nothing seems to happen to him. Uh, but Nori, what's your alignment again? Oh, shit. Uh, neutral good. Am I temporarily... Am I permanently evil? That would be bad. Um, They're just magic herbs. Uh, like a top flower top blooms top. in your hair. Uh, oh, that's cute! <laughs> And, and like sits you know where your where your braids start to go in the back of the head it seems to bloom and just sit like right on top of your head just not quite sunflower-esque but like a large tulip these are very strange um <clears throat> then we have Hamrick Hamrick the 35 is, is Bryn nothing happened oh the 35 is Bryn mm -hmm. oh that's not gonna be good um, uh -oh. Alright, roll a d6 for Bryn. Oh shit. Well, I did the 100. I guess I'll take the blame for this too. Five. Okay. Um, She sits there and she's looking at you, Nori, as this flower has bloomed in your head, and you're just like, is it at least a cute flower? Um, as you look at Bryn's face and she starts to smile and as she smiles you, you're looking at her and it's almost as if the aging process reverses and she seems to get some of the wrinkles in her face get lighter and lighter before disappearing completely she has now gotten younger by five years <clears throat> so Nori is even Good more for her. Um, what? <laughs> She's older than me. So she She was maybe. Five years. 
She's like 55, isn't she? Nope, she's 51. She's... Okay. Wait, Brynn is 50? <laughs> All right. Um, and that brings us to... Ole. Nope, now it's my turn. I'm working, oh, I'm working at 46. Oh, sorry, I wasn't scroll all the way up. Uh, 46. Uh, Amrick starts floating. And what? is going straight up. Oh, no. Are you levitating floating, or yes. just... Am I actively going up, or am I just kind of hovering there? You're going up. Because you've never oh. had levitate cast on you before. <clears throat> and say two turns if you've started to float straight up before you get a handle on your up and down momentum. But you have levitate on you for what? Levitates for 10 minutes? One minute? Look at love right now. I think it's 10 minutes. It's like 10. I think it's 10, 10 minutes. Yeah, it's 10 minutes. And as Polly is like seeing all these things happen, he goes, Whoa. And then you hear, Yeah. I agree. As there's now three more Polly's all sitting there eating food. You're right. We should have cast Turn Undead on that tree. I mean, that's what I was saying. I agree. Why didn't Yeah, nobody that? listens to us. You know, they don't appreciate our brilliance. One looks at them just like stroking his his feather beard up. Very weird. We're going to bed. Night, guys. Good night, Ollie's. Deuces. Do you have some sleeping Cuddle bags? up in a giant pile of Polly. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Polly dog pile. It's like first lays Polly, and then one on the front, one on the back, and the fourth one's like, and then. Is yes. is Racha jealous of Amrick flying? Oh wait, Racha can fly. Never mind. He can fly now. Yeah. <clears throat> Rebecca just... asks if Racha is jealous of Koparin. No, Racha's got his own thing. During any of the boosted magic stuff, he could actually fly, fly. So <clears throat> he just hasn't shown it up. I feel like I need to shave, but I don't know how you shave feathers. Rachel would look at you and go, you don't. You pluck. How, how like, expansive is this beard? It's a three-foot-long beard. Fuck. I just, like, have, like, the little Pikman flower. <laughs> yep. None of them in clothes match with if, this If I beard. pull at it, what happens? It hurts a little bit. Strange. I have to continue to stroke my white beard. It hurts as much as like you were pulling your hair. Like, Can I try to pull it out? Yeah. Ah, fuck. Pew. <laughs> no. Aw. This is not a never-ending flower. Like... <laughs> I just have forever flowers. Just like this is my. I've got a metal hand now, and I got flowers growing out of my hair. I We're might just as well just fucking with it. lean into it. <laughs> I got vines in my arm. Just becoming full plant lady. I mean, it's not your goal anyway. In the end. <laughs> so, Polly finds sleep with himself um, and is able to fall asleep before the mirror image disappears. The levitate only lasts for a few minutes before you no longer have to focus on being on the ground. I'm probably like, well, I'm probably floating for the hell of it when it goes away. So I'm like 10 feet in the air and I just drop. Just <clears throat> shaking everything. Polly sleeps right through it. Comparing, uh, Nori's pulled out the flower. Brin's age seems to be sticking. And so does your beard. Ah. Or he's just like tucked the flower behind her ear. She's like, I it would be kind of hard to sleep with the flower. I'd squish it. So there. Good night. 
Are we doing watches? Yeah. Her child's like, I guess I'll take first. Uh, Brian will, Brian will take first watch. Excuse, We've got Mr. Metal Man who doesn't excuse sleep anymore. Excuse me. My job now. Like, oh, I thought you were just a little bit more preoccupied with the levitating. Yeah. It's gone. Oh, okay. Good night. <laughs> I know. I was just like, Kaporn doesn't quite feel. He's like, I understand letting one person, but letting one person only do it all night seems kind of mean. If you'd like to wake honest? up and, and, and finish the watch with him, you're more than welcome to. Well, I want to also try to attune, to attune to this ring, so see if that happens. So, Okay, so you're spending an hour to attune? Yeah. Alright. <clears throat> um, after an hour, you do attune to it. Mm. Um, where did I put it? There it go. Do we do? Do we do? Do do? Um, where the? Here we go. It's probably cursed, and I'll add it to my items. <laughs> Parents overdue for a cursed item. <laughs> okay, it's called the Ring of Free Action. That's a good. That's a good magic item. Interesting. Ring of free. I'll read now, what it does. Now Nori won't be the only one who's not in You're... blowed down by movement. Yeah, you'd be immune to difficult terrain too. There's oh. it has additional benefits if my memory serves. Is also as paralyzed and restrained. In addition, to magic can either yeah paralyzed or restrained, so I can't be put to sleep. I can't be restrained. Can't Magic. be paralyzed. Yeah. Magically. And I don't do a difficult terrain. Me. Even though technically, comparing if he just would have activated his boots and someone just attached a rope to him, they could have just ballooned him behind. Which which thing are you de attuning to re attune to that? How many attune because you have a bunch of attuned stuff, don't you? The loot is currently not working. So I'm not attuned to it. But I only have a total of four attunable items. If I count Luke. Because my sword my sword is my packed weapon. Yeah. And his wind fan. And wind his... fan is on use. Yeah. His only attuned stuff is his lightning tattoo, his boots. My boots. And now the ring. I should ask someone if I could figure out how to just keep the lightning tattoo. <laughs> no. It doesn't work like that. Damn. So, <clears throat> sleep is garnered. The night passes over. Amric, make a perception check. Hmm. 21. Okay. You keep a, a lookout while going into low power mode and after you get out of your sentry's rest and you still have a couple hours before the rest of the team wakes up um, with it being nighttime and it's starting to creep into day you there's this, this momentary shifting in how clear the air is and everything and even you not being as observant as Nori is, you can see the other island to the north uh, for about half an hour before the sun really comes up and that reflection starts to block your view. Before it starts to get bright out, there's something I would like to do. Okay. Um, we were pretty far from the Soul Mountain, so with how far we are, um, on this world's planet, um, would it be to the point where constellations just look different, or are they outright like different from where we? Well, like I said, every everything at night is based upon what right the, anyway. the night gods decide. So, yeah, it's it's very much going to be a whatever they feel like putting up into the sky at that night. Which, like I said, 
the, the followers of those have been able to predict and, and read and use those as a understanding of what their gods are feeling or going through or have planned for them but those require very specific clerics but as far as looking into the sky and the angle of seeing something it's really much more of where the gods have decided to put it rather than where they always sit and how you see them Okay, um, then... Then yeah, I'll kind of just... Is there anything... that I can see going on with the Northern Island right now? Um, no, you're barely able to see the island itself. Um, uh, it's just when the, when the sun starts to creep up before it actually makes its full sunrise that you're able to see it, but nothing obvious happening on there you know it's not on fire or or anything like that well um then i'll kind of just finish out the watch for now then okay been hilarious if you guys wake up and the entire northern island is just on fire it's like There's smoke billowing in the sky it's like hmm, that looks like a problem this this next part of the quest is gonna suck guys <laughs> but morning arrives where cha wakes up 10 minutes before everyone else to do his normal cockadoodle do, which sounds a lot different now that he can actually speak. Um, but he's still a pretty good mimicker, so it's not too far off. It's enough to wake you guys up and I'll go, oh my god, we forgot about this and hate it. But the morning is yours. Alrighty. Is the beard still there? Yes. I love it. Corn wakes up and actually like forgets about it. Um You gotta scratch your chin. Handful of like Fuck. Wakes up and remembers. She's like I'm gonna go take care of this. Or try to anyway. How do you plan on doing that? The long and painful way it seems. While you do that, I'm going to go over here and commune. Okay. Corn walks off like 20 feet and just starts like looking in the water like to see if it'll help be a mirror. Or pulling out his compact. Um, and just start... Ow. Oh, fuck. This is gonna suck. Ow. It's very much less pulling a hair and very much more trying pulling to... Pulling a no, you're like pulling grips of nose hairs at once. Oh. It's like me the player knows how to get rid of this thing. But oh, yeah. yeah. Polly knows Rory exactly because he's dealt with this before. Oh, yeah. Wonderful. As for Porn's over here suffering. Yep. Um, it's very it's... much he's going to come back looking like he fucked up his face shaving. Um, Polly, you pass commune. P100? Nope. <clears throat> you cast commune. And as you open up your eyes, um, you don't find yourself on the shore anymore. You don't hear the rushing of water or anything like that. Um, you find yourself in a familiar tent. In front of a throne of bones. And the female that you saw that was Vessel of Trilithia does not sit in front of you. Instead, this woman, um, draped in black cloth that almost seems to defy gravity um, around her face. Though seemingly sheer, you can't see past as there's just dark shadow behind it. Um, I won't even try. Her lengthy body is draped in more dark and black and red. Um, fabric that again also seems to defy gravity slightly just floating around um she's got her legs crossed and just the, the tail and the, the ankle of her legs are exposed um underneath all this other cloth as well and she's got this almost blue 
pale blue tint to her skin um, before ending in these black, almost glass-like looking uh, like stiletto heels. Her hands, her arms and hands move out from underneath the clothing and it seems to like brush almost as if you're underwater and she moves the fabric and it kind of floats there for a moment before slowly folding down and her arms are on the, the armrests. Her hands, the only thing exposed, um, you see the same blue white tint to her skin and then the, the nails actually extend down into claws, hooking to a point. Um, and they're painted blood red. Am I assuming that this is her true form? This is her... As close to it that I'm allowed to see? Exactly. Okay. Um, I will nod and bow and thanks. Like, you're exactly who I need to talk to. Um, there is a clearing in the jungle, in the forest, that is surrounded by death. Is there any way that we can release those souls? I would prefer you didn't. Okay. Um, if you say so, then we won't. I just... It hurts me to see them in torment. Um... You're the expert. Um, as far as the newest riddle goes, we're supposed to find... Um, the home where the woman lies. Uh, yeah, a home where a woman lies. Is that supposed to be where your avatar is or someplace else? The island you're going to is not mine. Does that mean we're still heading south in a southerly direction to the next island? Your path is your own. You choose where to go. Well, I'll just stand, Polly will just stand there kind of confused. Like, that did not make any sense at all. Well, the blue um, island that I just circled right now is the island you guys are on. Just letting everyone know. Oh, that's right. We, Trilithia's was the one to the left of us, correct? correct. Okay, yeah. I, I keep thinking it's the one to the north of us, but... Same. Wrong. Hence why I also said to Amric during his shift... You guys went to the North Shore, and you can see the island, so that would mean that you can only see an island northward. Um, okay. I will... So she hasn't sent me off yet. I'll look at her and, um... Yeah, one more question. Okay. Um, I'm not really good at riddles. Um, is there an obvious sign that I can look for that'll help us solve this one? The start of you figuring this one out won't be as obscure. And with that, she sort of just turns her wrist and sort of gives you this wave. And as it does so, 
you sort of feel this momentum like shift your shoulder and you spin and as you spin you open up your eyes and you're back on the beach okay i'm ready to go Oh. Amber comes, I mean, I Amber, uh, Laura comes walking back, just bleeding from just everywhere across his chin. And he goes, he's like, I'm ready to go too. <laughs> As the whole thing just grows back. These herbs are awesome. More and just like press the digitation, all the blood, and he's just like, Perrin, I think you might need to get used to the beard. I don't want to. I don't like it. It's Rachaw's yeah, thing. The... Racha is actually oh, going to mimic is... Amric from that one time. Everyone's just trying to steal my stuff. I don't want to. <laughs> Take it away. Amric was levitating. Kapoor and now has feathers. <laughs> Kapoor was like, I, I helped you fly the first time when we met. <laughs> I'm assuming he just has to dispel magic on it, right? I'm not casting dispel magic while this is happening. I'm afraid of ripping blanket thingies. Dispels really... everyone's magic items. <laughs> I ain't touching that shit. That's been... It's still stocked, but I ain't touching it. It's more of a comparing quarantine zone. Everybody take off all your magic items. Walk 300 feet away. Fuck. I don't want to do it. Kaporin just like... He's like, Kaporin's like, all right. Nope. Now nope. Has I'm to not be doing it. <laughs> I don't understand what the big deal is. I deal with this every day. It's befitting you, Polly. Your beard. Oh, I don't... You have, of, you have a last of a baby face now. What do you have against white feathers? They stain easily. I know, I prefer to be able to they grow back white the next day. Ta-da, party beard. Richard just goes, you just need to learn how to eat correctly. As he takes a little bit of food and goes, <laughs> like, a, <laughs> like a bird. <laughs> it's just like, thanks, Richard. Oh, also, um, he's going to spend five minutes trying to teach you how to, how to eat correctly now. Like a bird? Yes. Maybe no, wouldn't be back more. And you just like pull, pull it on your forehead. <laughs> like, Richard, this isn't how a normal person eats. Open up your mouth. What? Why? He's just got this fish. This raw fish. <laughs> I said, open Richard, up your mouth. No. Escaporin starts. I, I, I don't think I can even swat Richard off of me. Nope. <laughs> what would I roll against that? <laughs> Athletics or acrobatics? They're acrobatics a plus one. I don't know how, but it's a plus one. Because your dex is a plus one. Yes, yeah, so you're, oh. you're not beating him. As he has now climbed up on top of your head, has tilted your head back, is now opening your mouth, and it's like, <laughs> all right, and then, oh no, he's got his feet on your arms. Oh god, Richard, no. Close your mouth. Close it. What spells do Macha have? No. What? <laughs> he has gust. <laughs> do I have to banish Racha off of me for a quick second? I'll banish him, you might rid him from this plane permanently. <laughs> Um, oh yeah, he okay. still has monk stuff. Okay. No! <laughs> Four extra arms? Not fair! No, not that. He doesn't have that. He lost that. Um, but oh. he does have key points, flurry of blows, martial arts. Um, so he's just gonna <laughs> he's just gonna take two fingers and just the, the corner of your jaw and it's gonna make you go, ah! <laughs> and then he's gonna put the fish in, and then he's gonna slam your mouth shut. Is it a raw fish? Yeah, it's a raw fish. <laughs> Burn's gonna give parasites. 
Do the child, the next time you go fishing, get more than one and I'll cook them up. Good point, Trent. <laughs> oh, I haven't gone fishing in at least a week. And then he's gonna... <laughs> yeah, do throw that up. That's for the best. Oh, you didn't want me to chum the water last night? We're chumming it this get morning. Get that out of your system. <laughs> but for like the first like 20 seconds as, as it's in your mouth. And he goes, see? Feathers are all clean. As he, he throws up and immediately gets puke on the feathers. I'm gonna meditate for like five minutes because that's I think that's what clerics do. I'm gonna continue that's, that's like the best I got. to throw up until. Yeah, you gotta pray for an hour. Sorry about it. Is it is it still um sunrise right now? Past, but yeah. Okay. It's early in the morning. I'm coming up this ocean. Polly's like, you have to pray for an hour, and he's like, but I don't want to. <laughs> spells, no spells. That's the choice. Actually, it depends on your god. Some of us have to do it in the morning. Some of us have to do it at night before we go to bed. It just depends. Twilight clerics are really weird. Did your god ever tell you when you need to pray? Uh, yeah, I do it in the no. morning. It's kind of like being a druid, I guess, huh? You know, commune with t- nature every morning? Yeah. Except now you have to waste two hours instead of one. That's only if I need to switch my spells. Or get the slots back. Slots you have are to pray all every morning stuff. for slots. Do I know? I, is it is it just every morning or do? You know, I, I don't, I don't believe, believe that. Time. No, Eric, your uh, Umbros is a nighttime god. Oh no! So you get it when you long rest, or in your case, centuries rest. I'm fish up throwing up. Clean myself up and come back as as long as you long rest at night. Oh, so I feel like we were to like sleep in the middle of the day, then he wouldn't get his stuff back. Well, I assume if we woke up like at nighttime, I would just do it then. Yeah, you wouldn't be able to get your new slots until the night. Hmm. A little bit annoying. Not too crazy though. It's more because of a, I'm a f- your first level, so it's not. Yeah, if I'm a first level cleric, it hasn't changed anything for me spells spells wise. I just have additional access to some. Yeah. Yeah. No, you uh, you won't have to deal with it too much until you choose a domain. I do have a domain. You oh, the nature domain. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, when you're doing your druid thing, instead of you know um, prepping. You still have to prep for your druid stuff, but you just have to spend an extra, like, because you're already doing nature things. So it's more like spending an extra 15 minutes to be like, hey, nature, cleric things. So it's it's not a full I'm hour I'm just for kind you. of... So, so when... it's kind of, I'm already, it's what I was already doing. I just kind of add a little <laughs> bit extra to it now. Exactly. Yeah, so I just continue doing my own thing. And not then if you're not, worried about if you're it. not swapping spells, then it's even less time, so you're fine. Yeah, I'm not swapping anything. Okay. <laughs> I think I got the fish out of my system. But y'all don't don't do that again. You didn't even ask for permission. <clears throat> you're a funny one when it comes to consent, so I ask for consent to set you up, you say yes, and then you get upset at me, and then... It's it's like asking for consent for you just doesn't make any difference. Thank you. Orn just feels defeated. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, he's not wrong. (laughs) Blech. I know better when you can have words. (laughs) So... What would you guys like to do? Cool. Go hang out. Mm-hmm. The morning is yours. Oh, okay. hey. You guys, I talked to Trilithia this morning. 
Like the real one, not her avatar. What does that look like? She was pretty amazing, actually. I didn't go overboard or anything. I was just asking about that clearing. Apparently she likes it the way it is. So. She also said that her island wasn't the island we were supposed to go to, which was pretty obvious, but I thought I'd ask just in case. Um, And she said what we're looking for is like pretty obvious as well. At least the beginning part of it. Well, the riddle says we're going to do a shapes now. Wait, does that say that? Oh, I'm putting words in my Wouldn't mind. Wouldn't it be nice if we were dealing with shapes like arrows that say, go here? Something tells me it's not going to be that easy. Well. I, I mean, can hope. I assume instead of taking the literal of everything that we it says, we have to look for the shape of them. So, like, the shape of a woman that, or a place where a woman lies? Or home? I don't think we're actually going to find pyramids on these islands either. Mm-hmm. And then we find, like, a literal place for pyramids to be. <laughs> mm-hmm. But we at least have to go to this next island. I don't think it's how, close. How, how far is the island from us? Like, is it a? Are we gonna need to build a raft real quick? Um. It yeah, it's not right there. It's not swimmable. Is it twenty minute? Is it twenty minutes worth of cloud walk? Cloud walk? Uh, it, Probably could get there in that amount of time. Wind walk. Wind walk. Let me long rest mm. while I'm thinking about it. And her chop. Rest for chop. Yeah. Poor bird got crisp. <laughs> Crispy bird. Mm, doesn't smell like chicken. And for those jokes, you wonder why he force fed you fish. It is my head. Get out of my head, Richard! Um, alright. So our options are raft, wind walk, yeah. And I've only got one in the spell gem, and I'm not sure how it's gonna react. Yeah, I, I say we just go with the raft. Windwalk is a much more powerful spell to use this early in the day. Uh, you arcana want to build ship. a raft? Me? Arcana. Comparing. I'm very... Or compared or me? Comparing. He's the one that's proficient in it. 23, sir. Um, one thing that you have uh, thought about and since you guys have been dealing with this for a while and you know that magic items hold, retain their own magic, you're very curious about these spell gems, as in, if we use them, since they have their own magic in non-magic times, would that possibly still work? Yeah, yeah, I, I'm, I'm halfway thinking it might not work, and then if I were to put a spell into it, it might break it unless I put, like, a level one spell into the level eight uh, <laughs> spell gem. Well, if it was going to break it, well, my my spell gem has had a spell in it the whole time. It has it. Well, you want to tune to it. Oh, well, yeah, that too. Forever. Well, here's the thing. You don't so have to it. attune to it to cast. I know, I'm just letting him know that it's not available right now. He has to reattune to it to cast it. Well, here's the thing. I if the magic items are technically of its own magic, then technically wouldn't the spell last for its full duration in the case of the magic item? Because my fan will work for 10 minutes straight. 10 minutes? A minute straight? I forget. I don't know. The time it takes for the wind for Gus to work? <clears throat> Gus is a cancer, so it's not that long. Yeah, Gus Gus the wind. Is... Instantaneous. A minute. Yeah, instantaneous a minute. Um, 
gust of wind. Um, so maybe it will last the whole duration as well. So we would get a full, well, eight hours of wind walk. It's possible. I mean, For parents, Arcana, would that be something? He's about saying as much as he would know. So, I mean, none of us know shit. But we're going to end up learning it sooner or later. I mean, according. Speaking of which, Bella, where are you? Uh, Oh, God, don't do that. No, she's there. She's just not. She's still invisible. She popped that invisibility during uh, boosted magic time and it's still holding on. So she's like, Nope, I'm good. I ain't breaking this shit. If if we want to test it, I have the level two gem. After, if we want to build a raft, build it, I'll give the tools back to Rachok since they're his anyway. And then I'll test it on my spell gem. As you say that, Rachok is directly behind you. Since it's much cheaper to replace than the other one. We'll need something that will last long enough to make us fall out of. I have something that will last long enough. What? I mean, we could try it now before you spent, waste a couple hours building a raft. Oh, look, but, uh, Amrick, I'm like, I've got something too. It's called gentle repose. All you have to do is kill someone, and I'll look back and compare it. You know, I like, like the idea. No. Thor goes, uh, shutting that idea down. <laughs> I. I will find out. I know, I'll Nori, it was a joke. I'll give the tools back to Rachop. Okay. I will spend the hour to attune to the spell gem. Since we're going to wait here anyway. You, you can. What's in the spell gem currently? Bless. You don't need to attune to it to cast it. You just need to attune to it to put the spell in. Bless is not going to last, though, unless I cast it like at the time. How long is Bless? Minute. A minute, minute yeah. I mean, I mean, we we can try that. I'll, we'll just wait till the very end of the magic time, or we'll, or the end of it, and I'll use the spell gem to cast bless. Well, if well, if our thinking is that the spell will still cast as if normal, you can cast it outside of magic time, no matter what. And if it dies out immediately, then we'll have our answer. If it lasts for its full duration, then we also have our other answer. Okay, so keeping the tools for now until we know. Um, once the magic time ends, I will use it to cast level two bless, and I will hit. Um, let's do myself, Polly, Rin, and Rachel. Assuming it works. Yeah, a, uh, I've got the spell gem thing pulled up. You don't need to attune to it to cast the spell. Um. Yeah, I know. I see it. I'm just looking at his spell gems info stuff. On my end. Oh, is his special? No. Oh, okay. Besides being a lower ranking one. That- <laughs> I mean, while he was doing that, I'll cast Spiritual Weapon into my Pearl of Power. And we'll see. I think Pearl of Power just gives you an extra spell slot as an action. Just be like... Little boost. Well, then I should be able to cast a level three spell slot outside of magic time. Correct. Technically. Uh, I'm not 100% sure how the Pearl of Power works, but. If memory serves, I want to say it literally just gives you a third, a third level spell slot. So if. Yeah. Fourth what? level or higher. Oh. I can spend a fourth level or higher to do a third level. Oh. Just kind of a waste of a fourth level right now. Yeah. Okay. All right. So one thing at a time. Who's going first? Amric, I believe. Yes. All right. What are you doing, Amric, specifically? Um, as soon as the magic time ends. I attempt to cast my level two bless spell out of the spell gem onto 
myself, Rachel, Polly, and Britt. Okay. You feel the magic. Um, leave the spell gem, and it does uh, activate. Does it stay for? And bless everyone, and only goes for half the time. Half the time. Okay. But for an eight-hour spell, that's still really good. Well, depending on how. <sighs> well, I will relay. I mean, I know they can feel it, but I'll relay that information to Nori for it. Okay. Then, honestly, it would be smarter to cast it during non-boosted time. That way, we know we have at least some control over it. It won't explode. The one thing I want to try before we go ahead and use it is to check on the condition of the spell gem now. Did it, because we're casting it during non-magic time, does it ruin the gem? You understand my thinking, Val? I understand. I'm just waiting for you to actually say I'm going to do something. Yeah, so, um, I mean, if I, if... I thought you were just still talking with everybody. Yeah, if, um, Amrik will allow me to inspect the gem, or... I mean, I'm, I'm I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll hand it over to you. Okay. <laughs> make it a Arcana check. Oh, that was almost a nat one. Um, unfortunately, you don't know a whole hell of a lot. It still has the same insignias, markings, and everything that it did prior. It currently has no magic inside of it, so it doesn't have that little glow to it that it normally would. But you've seen it not have the glow when there's no spell in it. So, unfortunately, you there is no way to know on a physical base. It's not broken. It's not shattered. It's not any of those things. Okay. All the runic stuff is still on it, so... As far as it looks, it looks fine. Well, I can, um... If I give the tools back to Rachel, I can reach into it and see if it still works. Oh, Rachel's taking those things, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. But I will, I'm attuned to them then, and I will start... If, if we're not going anywhere right now, I'll start reattuning to the spell gym. So we're just chilling here for... How many hours have we been here? Just awake? Just get, sitting here? Probably like About three. an hour. Oh. You guys do all your spell stuff and have a little bit of breakfast. So another hour. Yeah, that's not bad. Or will continue to be like, how do I get rid of these feathers? Hmm. Um... I guess fast forward time. <laughs> you are now attuned to well, you're feeling the spell gem, right? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> you attuned to the spell gem. Cool. Oh. You get the Sorry, understanding man. that uh, it's still a functioning spell gem. During this next um, magic boosted time. So I can't do anything while it's not magic boosted. I will cast aid into the spell or into the spell gem. Um, now the question is, what will happen when you push a boosted spell into it? I will. I will tell you this though: um, when you connect to the spell gem, uh, it can no longer hold third levels. It was only ever a second level spell gem. Uh, the bloodstone spell to... gem is a rare item. It can store up to third level spell. Oh. I think you just chose a second level at that time. That's right, because I don't have third levels. Oof. But now it is only a first level spell gem. It's only a first level now? Yes. First okay, level. Okay, we're not gonna We're not gonna use the spell gem because I'd like to keep that. It de it degraded two levels? Oh my. But if you want, you can put a first level in there. I mean, I, I guess I'll put Bless in there. Okay. Bless goes in. Bless goes in. Put your Bless foot out. No. Oh. I did not shake it all about. Um. Well, that's 
good information to know. Okay, so how how far away is this? The the island, it's from... You're just looking at it. It's decently far away, barely at the edge of your visual spectrum, but you don't have any clue as to actual distance. It's a possi- we could possibly get there within one wind walk. If what our if we imagined it took how many wind walks to get to the other South Island or the other from the other island, or we could use a raft. Really want to watch you build another we could raft and use a raft. That don't way, really if wanna... we don't get it, we're not stranded in the ocean. I'm I'm for the more mundane solution. Well, I wouldn't be willing to building the raft this time. It'd be Richard. He's got the tools. Makes it into an axe and hands the axe to you. And you're chopping the wood. <laughs> I will be chopping the wood. I'm going to experiment with demi plane while we wait for the raft to be built. I am going away from Koparin. I will supervise the trees. Koparin will, Koparin will walk away. I'm going to make sure they get they don't chop down anything that has, like, a baby bird's nest. Just not fucking with Demiplane. Hey, I'm I major at wide. I can do that. It's also an excuse. That's fair. Aren't these trees a lot bigger than the normal ones that we were dealing with a while back? They're chonky. Did you ever find a five-foot one? The only one that you I mean, was, like, I could. The one is dead. Yeah, the the only one I found that was that big is dead. I could ask around. But they're French. I wouldn't don't succumb to that. <laughs> I'm gonna stay out of the way and practice my forms. Okay, go ahead and make a text check. I'll make him re-roll it. It's not an instant thing. It's an hour long. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah stuff. Oh, okay. And if you're away doing a demi-plane thing, fine. I wanted to really help. Nice oh. Job. Yeah, burn that at the beginning of the day. That sounds smart. Right? You know what? He said it. Go ahead, Polly. No! <laughs> re-roll that I thing. I shouldn't have said shit. Natural 20. Okay, I don't feel so bad. You are. That was literally the thing he needed to succeed there. <laughs> you are done with all the dexterous side of things um, on learning to push your spell from an action to a bonus action. What's next? <clears throat> now is the magical side. Just learning to decide. All the in- intelligence stuff? Uh, no, this one will actually be wisdom. But we'll have, once you work on it again, we'll, we'll get it. You at least have the hand forms down to to get it all done. Uh, Nori will... She's worried about the boost of time, but we're right next to the ocean, so I could theoretically just throw it over the ocean. I'd like to try with my... Um, practicing my range for Produce Flame. Grab one of the remaining little things I have and use that to try and edit the spell. Okay. Um, have you been successful in anything on that yet? Uh, I only got to try it once because everything went to shit. <laughs> gotcha. I don't think so, you were successful on that one try, right? No, I was not. Um, Alright, so I'll give you the option to um, Go in under your thing, under your spell that you've been working on. Yeah, because I don't have anything marked off for any of your spells yet. Um, produce flame, you said. Just increasing the range. Yeah. Do you want to work on the vocal or the somatic? Um. We'll start with somatic. Okay. So, dex check. 
Uh, well, I'm using the, what's it called? The little plant stuff. It helps, yeah. No, it, it dr okay. drastically drops your the DC for it. Okay, so this is dex? Mm -hmm. It makes it so that way you're using less, uh, the DC is less for it and less amount of successes are needed for you to fully change it. Okay. It was, um, it was just a D100 mechanic last time. Yeah, I, 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 I moved it around and changed it. So okay. since you're successful, it doesn't use up that herb that you're using. So you can reuse it. Um, it's one success. Um, and you'll need five uh, dexterity check successes. And then three for the uh, vocal, which will be wisdom. And then you'll be good to go. So, first one, success. All right. Um, Amrix, go ahead and give me an athletics check. And Kaporn, what are you doing with Demiflame? Mm -hmm. I've never played with it, so I want to... Let me know Kaporn's what you're doing. Gonna... He... He's going to use a tree. It just says... Uh as a the surface hi tree <laughs> um oh a flat solid surface excuse me so what a tree can be tree is not flat <laughs> yeah i assume <laughs> um literally round yeah i was just like oh shit um I guess I wouldn't find a flat surface on this beach side. <laughs> Relatively flat, some of the gravel stuff you can. It doesn't need no, to be like like at a 90 degree angle. It could be at an angle but as long as it's smooth flat for it. Okay, we'll try it on. We'll just look for the flattest surface I can. You just can't do it on a tree, which is literally a circle. <laughs> and we'll try it on the flat gravel then. Okay. So you go over, you turn around, you walk further away, turn around. I can still see them. I walk further away. All right, this looks good. About 150 feet away, we'll say. Cool. Um, and he points. And, and there's no vocal to it. It's just the somatic. So I knock. Knock, knock. If, I mean... I mean, if there is a particular movement that, yep. that happens, but... Knock, knock. Is anyone home? Hello. Just my dad. Um, oh, God. I opened the door my dad's there. I was just looking at what I put down for it. Boosted. Oh, I never thought of what would happen if it's boosted. Well, I just... Because the, the stone is very... Well... The spell has very specific, like, um, things that happen. Like, it's a 30-foot room in each dimension. But I don't know how that would affect... So, you uh, knock on the door. Mm -hmm. And it appears. And instead of being a single door, it's actually double doors. Interesting. I'm assuming it's, like, a basement style, so I'll have to, like... Yeah, you reach down and you pull them up and open. And there's a little staircase... Me about four steps, and as you step into them, your gravity shifts, and so instead of it being steps down, you're now doing steps up, and into a sixty-foot room. This is very cool. As he kind of looks around, like he's like testing the vocals. Echo. Um. Yeah, he's just being done with it. Um, and he'll. I don't know if I have anything. Do you have dark vision? Legend. Yes, I do have dark vision. Okay, so you can see the room is simple, just nothing crazy, nothing extra. Um, not not quite mm -hmm. the poor end up yet. <laughs> yep, not yet. Uh, but across the room, against the far wall, there is a fireplace. Oh, that's neat. Lit, unlit, unlit, unlit. Um. He wants to test some things with it, so he will un he'll leave in the room. Mm 
his one of his overcoats and some and a water skin in here. Just he's gonna test the room's um, recall ability. Okay. And then he'll just experiment, like fly around the room, keeping an eye on on the time and make sure he leaves the room before. 20, at least leave the room before the 20 minutes he knows that the magic time is over. And then he's going to test all the features with... Does it disappear when the magic's gone, or does it... It does. Okay. So he, he was smart to leave before the 20 minutes. Yes. Or else it would have been like, all right, good morning, you can go ahead and remove yourself from the campaign and from... <laughs> <laughs> well, fuck. He is gone forever? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Just... Um, he's friends with a bag man now. He's he the Bagman's bag man. buddy. I become, oh, the Bagman is just, it's like the Dread Pirate Roberts. It's a different guy. I become the Demi-Plane guy. It's, it's like um, Pirates of the Caribbean. There can only be one Davy Jones, but it can be swapped to the next person. Um, Yeah, so he it's puts Santa the Claus. items in. Oh, God. Santa Claus 3. And if you've watched The Princess Bride... I have. <laughs> Same concept, just giving multiple options. Okay. So he experimented, he left the items in there, and he will come back to those All right. the next time he casts the spell. He'd be, he'll go back and be, I didn't blow up. Good job. I have to move some items into the bag. It's the same as his proficiency score. That's why I rolled it. Oh, okay. Uh, he does, he's just making the round. <laughs> Chuck goes to fight us all. <laughs> it was a kill go boring. He it was a ruse the whole time, sons of bitches. Um, so he makes the raft um, sturdy enough with the same sort of concept that Amrick's going to be the outside boat motor. Detach the motor. And since it's, you guys aren't planning on doing days worth of travel, it's just strong enough to hold the rest of you guys minus Amrick um, and just heading in that direction. Amrick can still turn into a manta ray, right? Yeah, he's got the cloak. Yeah. Yes. Hence why he's the motorboat. We'll talk about that later. But shall we shove off? Onwards and seawards. Do we want to check the surrounding ocean before we leave? How are we going to check the surrounding ocean, Kaparin? I could detect magic, but I don't know if I want to. I mean, Amrick, Amrick has the cake, has the the cloak of the mantra. The cake? The, the clerk of the magic. If, if we're all going to get eaten by the Megalodon, I want it to be a surprise. You know, that's that's a good way to look at it. Let's have our death be a surprise. Onwards! Surprise as I can do. Oh, fuck. So, everyone couples together on top of the raft. Um, Amrick walks out and pushes the raft. Um, he pushes it for a while. It's not like the other island where it's like 20 feet and then drop off um goes out you know good 40 50 60 70 80 90 100 200 still just pushing this raft like we could have walked right next 300. to 300 is he not coming with us for he's pushing the raft are we wait i'm so confused what's happening you all are on the raft and he's pushing it waiting for the the sea floor drop. to finally drop and then he can start <laughs> swimming but that hasn't happened yet. It's a as fucking he's just, how deep is it? Oh it my is goodness, I love high. it so much. And yes! <laughs> he's been walking this entire time. Four, five, six. Get to about the thousand foot mark and you guys look back and the island's getting pretty small. And you guys are like, why aren't you swimming it? And Amrick's just like, I'm still on the floor. No worries, if you ever complain about being in the taxi again, I might lose it. Uh, Nori just like uh, she'll like get it. She'll like put her stuff away. So stuff that needs to get put away gets put away. She'll go over and put a hand on Amrick's shoulder and goes, 
Now you feel my pain. And she'll walk beside him. And for Amrit, chest high is very much Nori, like, shoulder high. <laughs> that is true. That's still very hard to walk. And for Polly, it's above head high. But it's very much like traveling the canals of Italy rather than, you know, surfing in the Pacific Ocean. So Kuporin, Brynn, and Amrit could technically have walked, yeah. and we only needed something big enough for Nori all yeah. in. Rich up. Right, but up. why would you want to ruin Brynn's armor like that? I'm going to put it away in the bag <laughs> before fine. we hopped in the ocean. Well, I'm made of metal. I don't think that applies. <laughs> Amr gets out of the ocean and just cut rust from the nipples down. <laughs> Is that how you get a tan now? I mean, I've heard of Ram just pressing but... chations to everyone to get rid of all the stuff. But yes, um, it could be very much walked in this direction um, from island to island. The islands are still technically connected. Um, nice. I appreciate you, Amrick. Good job, Amrick. Uh huh, uh huh. Let's go. Um, I will even say that at, at one point, you guys still just get on the raft, and Amrick sort of just forcibly floats to do the swimming speed to speed things up a little bit. Yeah, that would be faster. <laughs> yeah. It's just the sheer fact of like waiting for the floor to drop out, and it just never does. Um, it takes a few hours but eventually you guys do pull up to the southern shore of uh, the next island. S.S. Amrick. So we're, we are now on this island. Wonderful. What's this island look like? <clears throat> um, well, the part of where the shores are connected that you guys are on um, there is a decently thick forest in front of you but this one definitely more in line with uh, the forest that you guys have just dealt with rather than the other islands forests makes sense if these islands are still connected and this close to one another that seeds and such would carry on the wind and, re and propagate in different places nearby but uh Left, right, shore is the same, that this gravel and some sand. Thick forest in front of you. And that's about it. Alright, Mr. Riddlemaster. What's next? It's a map. It's a map. Um, <clears throat> he pulls out his riddle. Well... I mean, our attention's on the northern sky. Um, shapes, shapes. Figuring out the mean will lead you towards your prize. Find the home where the woman. Find the home where the woman lies, then tell her that you know. Wow. Well. There could be a number of things we're looking for if they're shape bound, like the shape of a house, or, I mean, where does a woman lie in a bed usually, or a grave, or a grave. Is there anything uh, weird about the tree line? Nothing different than the island you just left. Okay. Mm. Yeah, I mean, and then so to the east, from where the from there to the east where the forest cries, don't read the tempting tone. So I'm assuming the forest must be to our east, and all I see in front of us is forest. Correct. Mm -hmm. Well, we're going from where the where the woman lies, then to the east. Mm-hmm. But it does say to keep your eye or 
I mean, the first line says, "You look death in the eye, and I'll turn." Now we turn our attention to the northern sky. So we went north. Yep, we certainly did. I don't know. I don't know if you would call looking at the horizon the northern sky. Nor no, you can wild shape when we're not in magic time, right? Uh, what were you saying, though? I, I'm not sure. I've gotten conflicting reports. Your perception check, oh, your passive perception, um, would notice that there are two figures far to the west on the shore, standing at the water's edge. Are they moving? Nope. Are they looking at us, or are they too far away? Just too far away to... Just... Height-wise, things there, you assume humanoids. We have friends, and Nori points to where the two figures are. Friends! Shall we go say hi? I mean, if it's somewhere culturally significant to this place, they might know more than us. Are you sure they're people? They look humanoid. I can't be sure of anything. It's very far away. I'm doing my best. You got like 20 20, no, like 40 40 vision, so I would call it. 40 <clears> 40 <throat> is worse. Is it 10-10? There you go. What's eagle vision? <laughs> that um, happen with people, so only when Nori's an eagle. Yeah, I imagine my animal senses, everything is very loud all the time. Just like being, being like a dog with a expertise in perception, I smell absolutely everything. It's annoying. Horns, like, we should go say hi. Okay. Okay, so you guys start heading in that direction. Aye, sir. All right. Heading that way, you eventually do see that it is, in fact, two humanoids. Um, getting closer and closer and closer, it looks like they're fishing. Which right. kind of people. And getting closer, uh, you see that they are elven. You start to approach as your motley crew of yourselves as you are. Um, one, the taller one, uh, the taller male, uh, is continues fishing, uh, while the shorter one looks like um, a much younger male elf. Sort of Takes a couple steps in your guys' direction and waits for you guys to approach. Yeah, well, I guess we're walking up. Hello. <clears throat> Hi. How? It's an elf. How old does this elf look to go for it? Because elves, once they reach maturity, then they stay the way that mm -hmm. they look. It's. Oh, okay. So, it, yeah. if it looks like a child, it's probably a child. Were y'all the ones that were running across that the water on that raft? Yep. Uh, or just like pats Eric on the shoulder. That was real funny looking. Our friend yes, took time was. to build it, so he wanted to make sure that we used it. I mean, it did the job. We all got it here relatively dry. But that oh, uh, was still pretty funny to watch. Glad we could be of some sort of entertainment. Not a problem. We're just here fishing, so it's boring. I assume you guys live here, around here? 
yeah, we, and then there's a, <clears throat> uh, yeah, we live on the island. The dad kind of just looking over at all of you. Sorry. I, I mean, mean do we look personal. terribly intimidating? We just look like a bunch of weirdos. I have a feather honestly. beard. I'm, I'm yeah. a robot. Comparin has a feather beard. There's a robot <laughs> guy. Then there's Nori, oh. who's unintimidatingly looking. Then you've got Polly, who's for his effect, is intimidating looking. With his dragon got metal thing. arm. He's got his dragon warhammer and he's in full armor. So Then we got the Valk. <laughs> yeah, and then you got Bryn who's also in full armor. So yeah. There's we look kinda weird. The uh, two to the the non the non threatening one and the weird one have been the ones talking the most. So yeah. let's hope that was helpful. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to get too personal. Um, no, it's all right. You just y'all are definitely new to the area. Yeah, yeah. Uh, sorry about that. So what you doing here? I'm a fool's around. I'm not a fool. Featherbeard. Uh, what the hell is the 20 athletics check? Wait, where'd that come from? Well, no, Nori died for that insult. <laughs> yep. <laughs> she EXE'd. Stop working for that one. Back. There she is. <clears throat> um, I don't know why Wi-Fi never dropped. Sorry, go ahead. It's all good. We're on a scavenger hunt kind of thing right now. We're looking for certain geographical features. <clears throat> Gee. You don't know what we're looking for. Well, that sounds we're like it's going to be a hard one then. Yeah, yeah, no kidding. It's supposed to be like these shit. We're looking for shapes in these certain forms. Not helping, buddy. That sounds a lot like geometry. My dad's tried to teach me geometry. I really don't like it. Math's not my favorite strong suit. Uh, I've I never cared for math either. As long as you know how to count coin. <clears throat> I can do that one, but dad says that, you know, that's only good for certain things and for certain people. Um, but I should really work more on, on my crafts. And he's been teaching me a lot of woodwork and we've been doing some fishing. And then, you know, we we're coming out here so he could show me his new casting technique. And so we've been out here for a few hours now. And uh, I was just telling him like, hey, what's that on the water? And then we saw this little blip, blip, blip as you guys were moving across the water. And now you guys are here. Yeah, good times. You're li really gonna leave Kaporn with the kid? <laughs> That's really be turned back. out well I'm sorry. before. Uh, I do yeah. love him, though. Comparing is we're about to give all of you guys' secrets away. Um, what's well, neat? We're not. We're gonna, we're trying not to be here too long, but we got stranded amongst islands trying to figure this stuff out. Well, that doesn't sound fun. Who stranded you here? Was it a sibling? Siblings are the worst. My, my are. sister one time, you listen to this, okay? My sister, we went down to the well, not in our town, but the town next to our town. And we were at the well, and she told me that, hey, do you know that if you go down about halfway, that there's an opening in the well, and inside the opening is where uh, all the coins will collect that people toss in the well for wishes. And so she put me in the bucket and started rolling me down the well, and I got about halfway down there and didn't see no coins. And I told her, and I yelled after her, I'm like, there's no coins. And she said, oh, it must be further down. And so she let the bucket down even further. And then eventually I, my feet started getting wet, and I looked down, and the bottom of the bucket didn't really have, like, a watertight seal. And the water was starting to seep up, and I'm like, Alyssa! My feet are getting wet. Get me up. And then she's like, nope. And she let go of the rope. And then I'm just sitting there swimming and swimming, screaming my head off. Luckily, I've learned how to swim the week before. Warren looks up at the dad. And he's just back to fishing. Just nodding. 
Hmm. Well, kid, I have to say that was a really mean thing of your sister. I know. I was sitting We're there just screaming kind of for hours and just swimming. They call it tread in water. I don't know if you know that, but it's called tread in water, where you stay in one spot on top of the water, but you kind of just keep kicking your legs and, and making yourself uh -huh. there. But uh -huh. I got pretty tired of that after a while, so then I had to do what they call a dead man's flow. Don't worry, I wasn't dead, but it was a dead man's flow, and I was on my back. And uh -huh. I kind of uh -huh. spread my legs out and arms out like a starfish. You know what a starfish is? They're pretty cool. They're these little things that sit on the bottom of the water. Well, not the water, but they they sit on the Do bottom of the what a starfish is love him so much <laughs> he's, a new, he's a new fireball um born gonna give him a gun <laughs> Don't give him Hi, i love you here you go gun <laughs> Charles, Charles like, have you ever heard of what a ball gag is ball gag no <laughs> That's that. No, we're not getting kicked off. We're not getting booted off another place. No, no ball gags. This isn't total drama island. Don't worry, we won't get booted off the island. You said your village <laughs> in another village. Is there some place we can maybe stay for the night? He kind of like slow turns to the dad, and the dad is now like giving the eye over to him. It's like. Well, if you do want good accommodations, I would suggest, and he kind of turns and points into the forest, uh, about a four to five minute walk in that direction, you're going to come across this uh, little town. Uh, it's bigger than our town, but uh, it's technically a little town compared to all the different towns and such on this island. Uh, but they do have a little hotel. If you if you want to stay someplace, the, um, excuse me, um, I remember what mood I was in when I made the town names of this one. Um, the town, the name, no, <laughs> the name of that town is called Deep Diddy, and uh, you just go on and in there, and uh, there, there's a, there's a building that's three stories tall. It's the only three tall, three tor three story tall building, and all it's of Deep Diddy. Got it. Uh, in, in all of Deep Diddy, so you'll recognize it pretty quick um and that one's the hotel thank you and i'll start walking that way is, please please tell me the spelling of this it's exactly how you think it is so d e e d e e d e e e d d d why thank you I was in a mood when I made all these characters in town. is the next town. I love this child so much, and I don't even know his name. The porn will give him one gold piece for the information. I, you know what? Okay. Oh, thank you kindly. He was about to say Featherman and then realized that there's a bird there. And so he's just like, Kaporin. Kaporin. Hey, Kaporin. You guys have a wonderful day. You too. Well. Dad, I made a gold. Uh, Nori. I guess we walk into the forest. Nori, go ahead and make a perception check. Fantastic. Now this, now this father is the head of the Assassin's Guild here, and now we're just about to get murdered. As you're walking what away, you take a look over your shoulder, and you realize that in his other hand that he had alongside of his leg the entire time he was holding a wand and yes any movements he was about to fuck you guys up with a wand of fireballs oh yeah he would be in full worn too we were talking to his child oh, yeah, yeah, a bunch no. of strangers in full armor yeah, yeah. No, he don't was, blame him at all he was ready he was ready but yeah i, I just want to get the cat kid a gold piece no, I mean, no. that's his own fault for bringing his idiot son out here by himself. No, he's, and not saying he's anything great. at all. I love him. So, you guys start walking uh, into the forest. 40 minutes, 45 minutes, that away. <laughs> that away it is. You do eventually come across, across the trail. Uh, not too far into the forest. And it's a pretty much a straight shot in the direction that they pointed you in. You guys travel, travel, travel. 
and uh, start to see space open up between the trees and start to see buildings along the other side. And then <clears throat> you get to the edge <coughs> of this town. At least it was a town at one point. Long, decayed, caved-in roofs. The forest seems to have started to overtake and reclaim the area that this town was created in. There's... Does it look like it's been destroyed by a wand of fireballs? Nope. It just looks like desertion and years and years and years of neglect or forgotten. That's weird. Wasn't this the town the kid said it was? What did they name it? D to D? Every time again. Um. Well, at least it's shelter, I guess. Do we find the three-story, three-story building? Very much more two and a half. <laughs> um, as the roof has caved mm. in, but it does stand out amongst the rest. Do you think that this? portion of the riddle is referring to a a dead woman um I did want to ask something does it feel like this is a magic like this is someplace hidden um with your past perception no you don't feel any externalities impacting what you're seeing Okay. I was just wondering if this was a sort of like, oh, we've hidden our town, it looks destroyed, but when you say the magic words, it appears. But because the guy had a wand, I figured. Understandable. But no. No no feeling of effects on this place. You can go and touch stuff and move it around. Also comparing the guy super didn't trust us. He could have been saying anything to get us to leave. Oh no, that was a kid talking to you the entire time. Yeah, I know, but he was looking for his, to his dad for approval, and then his dad told him not to say something, and I imagine he deflected to a different town. That was at least my thought. Are there any signs or anything still hanging? So the two and a half? Uh, make a perception. So they have like, okay. Sign is called Two and a Half Men. <laughs> That's interesting. Men, 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 men. Um, as far as all of the buildings and any of the signs that they would have had on them, it's long, either ripped off, broken off, decayed. This town doesn't look recently abandoned. We're talking hundreds of years. Uh, but you do find um, a, po a couple posts at the one of the other entrances to the town that has um, sort of like a, two chains connected to a, a wooden board that is in very precarious end of its being able to hold things up life. Um, and it's got sort of like this moss growing across all of it and you just like wipe it away and you do see um, it says D D D. Is it no sleeping lady or where the lady lies or anything nope. like that. No okay. other signs have survived. And look, just the general look at this town, how many house homes? Oh, about 30. <clears throat> I wonder why they left. Well, that's the thing. Did the they leave? Of what? Checking the buildings inside and stuff are there like Oh, you guys are going in buildings? I mean, I would, eventually. I'm not. <laughs> Some buildings are completely caved in, even trying to open up the doors. The doors break and decay in your hands, and then there's just debris on the other side. Um, the streets don't have bodies in them. Um, opening up the doors... Improvements? The majority of the homes are in... 
because homes are meant to be lived in and a little bit more taken care of over the years, a lot of the homes are destroyed. Mm -hmm. um, they, they haven't fared as well as some of the larger construct buildings that are made for shops and, and a lot of more foot traffic. So a lot of the homes are ungettable into. Um, there are a few, but those that you are able to peek through windows or uh, attempt the doors and look inside, you innately don't feel comfortable going in because it might start the destruction process. Um, but there are no bodies inside the, the homes. Um, there's no obvious markings or blood splatters or anything like that that you can see. <laughs> going in the the better kept buildings um there's no items if they if these were shops there's you know none of the shelves or anything have current items on them um, again no bodies no visible signs of distress or destruction that was the main cause of anything it just simply seems like this town up and left Or at least the inhabitants of it. It's very weird. Well, it definitely wasn't a bad thing. Destroyed. Sorry, go ahead. Probably just a matter of circumstance. Maybe they move town, join with another group of people. Could be a lot of things. Uh, which direction do we walk to get to the dude? Northeast. Northeast. To get to DTD. Which I would pipe up. Yeah, maybe, but why leave? <clears throat> Even if you did join a different society, like why leave all this infrastructure, all this stuff already built? And not at least to keep it up in case, you know, expansion or, or hell, even the one person to be like, hey, there's a ghost town over there. Might, might as well own it. I feel like the guy that we've, that's been hiding all these, hiding all the body pieces would have really taken advantage of that. Maybe they left the island. But, I mean, there are the two of them on the beach side. Probably didn't feel overly comfortable telling us where they lived. Hmm. You you wouldn't tell a stranger exactly where you lived if you first met them, would you? That's a dumb question. Because <laughs> she was like talking to Kapara and she's like, ne never mind, not gonna. Yep. Uh, um. Well, over here, just like, there's no great horns looking for a grave, since that's what he, his first thought was. Um, I'm assuming. You want to look for graves specifically? Is yeah, I was thinking. Go ahead. Like a tombstone or like a headstone or something? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> Is there like a specific type of plant that's kind of everywhere around here? Nothing specific. Yeah. A lot more moss, um, but moss Nothing. is usually the first thing to grow in a place like this. But nothing specific. Just moss and vines. Anything in the town square or anything like that, like a fountain or a statue or um not even a <clears throat> town square really. Um you do see a well, but looking down into it, <clears throat> it is long collapsed in on, in on itself. Uh, the, the actual water portion of it down there. Mm. But that's the only like freestanding anything apart from the buildings. It's not a large town. Yeah. Mm. And it's pretty nestled um, between the trees. So it's not like there's sprawling backyards to the homes or anything. It's like 
Open up the back door. Two steps. Treat. Try to make as small of a footprint in the forest as possible. Um. Does it look like it's just the forest just um canopy just all connects with it? There's mm -hmm. not really any like extreme gaps in the forest. Yeah, there's not too many. There obviously over the town there's a bit of a gap. Uh, mm -hmm. But other than that, no, the canopy's the same. Okay. Yeah, I'm not is sure. there a way you can tell if a person is a ghost or not? Um, Detect on death. Like yeah. if you were to run in a person, theoretically, if they were a ghost from this ghost town. I mean, usually about. only those that can see ghosts are people that can see stuff on the ethereal plane. I gave the kid, I mean, I gave a kid a he I handed him a gold coin. Mm -hmm. Should have him silver next time. I don't know. Maybe don't throw around hmm. gold. Amber needs yeah. food. I gave him 70, 70 something, or however. He's a gold. 75. 75? I gave him 75 pieces of gold. He has enough food for 75 days. <clears throat> Which you did have a long rest, Amber, so minus 10. I did when I woke up. Okay. Um. Well, I guess I don't know much of what's going on here, but more questions to more more questions to our list. Um. We, we have to find find the home where the woman lies. Well, unless she lies under a bunch of rubble, I don't think that's going to be here. <laughs> Just walk up. I know. <laughs> walk up once all the rubbles. I know. Um. Are there any, like, runes on the trees? Like, surrounding the town? Runes? Runes or markings or... Make a perception check. Have any of us checked out the hotel yet? I'm rolling a lot of sub-10. Not in particular, no. After those nat 20s, it makes sense. Um, you don't find any extra markings that aren't natural. I do need to head out in about 15, though. Yeah, I was wrapping this up. Can I check out the hotel? Checking it out. Open up the door. One of the double door handles breaks. Anything For, inside? I mean, varying stages of decay. Um, nothing extra. There's no people in here. There's no um, anything that was furniture or share you know anything like that is gone it's destroyed um there's uh a like a u-shaped front counter it looks like which itself is covered in um green growth and it the only reason that it's still standing is because it was built very sturdily you feel like you could probably push this entire thing over with not even an athletics check needed. There's stairs going up, um, and there's one hallway that has a couple rooms, it looks like. The other hallway is um, collapsed in. Well, I don't, I don't think this building will survive me going up the stairs, so I'm not going <laughs> to do that. Um, I guess I'll just leave, and I'll, I'll be with the rest of the group again. Are there any roads going out of town? Yeah, there's three roads altogether. The one that you guys came in and two going out. One north, one west. Did they look overgrown? Um, 
<clears throat> they're gravel laid, so survived a little bit better. Just like the, the trail that you guys took to get here, um, mm -hmm. had gravel all over it. That stops a lot of plant growth. So, and since the beaches are gravel, there's plenty of it to, to scoop up and, and take. So, beyond the, you know, occasional weed here and there that is grown through the gravel, it's still pretty solid and undisturbed. Were there mountains on this island? Yes, to the north. <clears throat> the riddle says to look toward the northern sky. I wonder if... If we're... Maybe we have to look higher? Maybe in the mountains? We can head in that direction. Don't have any other leads. We have to... Yeah. Other than to the nor northern sky and then... At least it... I mean, what's up in the sky is this... The mountains reach to the sky. Reach up to the sky. Mm -hmm. Are the are the trees sturdy enough to climb and like look over the canopy, or are they too flimsy? Yeah, no, it's the same type of trees from the last island. Okay, so like I could climb up and look over and yep. see out. Yeah. Okay, I'll do that. Can I? Like, what do? Yeah, you see seeing? plenty of forest in all directions, and then a mountain, uh, very small mountain range, about three mountains that poke up out of the forest, miles away, but. Um, that at least, you know, it does uh, crack the forest canopy and goes up about uh, a few thousand feet. Uh, I do want to ask this because this was the thought I had. By any chance, does the mountain range uh, look like a sleeping woman? No. It's not Moana. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. I knew the way. No, I don't. Um, that's his main thought. It's just north, northern. Well, so take the northern road. Nori's down for mountains, so <laughs> she's always down for mountains. Mountains look like pyramids. Nope. Um, I mean, if anything, it sounds like we have to head north anyway. Because <laughs> it sounds like the forest. There's a, sh there should be a for at least another forest. Forest cries to the east. But well, if it uh, it is shapes, so <laughs> I will say with this, uh, we'll go ahead and the end session there before you guys have made final decisions, so that way on Thursday everyone can discuss and orient and talk about it. <clears throat> um. But, uh, do we have any questions before we go? No. Alrighty then. Yeah, you guys have a great night, and we'll be back on Thursday. Night, yeah. Alrighty. Night. Night. Thank you for all of you that stayed with us. Have a great night. Thursday, 9.30 p.m. PST. Um, we come back to a full group to see if they can figure out where they're going. Um, but have a great night. Stay safe, and we'll see you next time.